Dr. Phillips and Dr. Forsmark, what about clinical trials in chronic pancreatitis? How do you approach this? What do you tell your patients? I'm sure most of us strongly encourage our patients to get involved in clinical trials. There's so much that we're learning, so, much adv so many advances, particularly in the genetic world, uh, advances in the way that we're treating pain, exocrine insufficiency and others. Can you comment on this? If you don't mind starting Dr. Phillips and then Dr. Forsmark. Thank you for this question, Dr. Gelrud. This is an excellent time in chronic pancreatitis for research. There's so much work to be done, but there's been a lot of progress made and there are numerous trials that are ongoing in order to understand more about what patients are experiencing in chronic pancreatitis and how we can help each of these issues. Usually in the encounters that I would have with patients, I encourage them to consider participating in clinical trials if they are eligible for them. Clinical trials are targeted um, investigations. And so it's very important that they consider carefully both the risks and the benefits of participating and whether they're willing to do that. And so it's important to make sure that they are informed at every step of the way. The National Pancreas Foundation maintains a list of centers of excellence uh, where many of these clinical trials are, are taking place and where patients can be enrolled. And so I encourage them to talk with their providers about what kinds of trials they specifically might be eligible uh, to participate in. Ongoing at the current time are trials investigating the uh, progression of diabetes in chronic pancreatitis and investigations of how to better understand the pain experience of patients with chronic pancreatitis. And also there are several new treatments that are in trial uh, looking to alleviate pain symptoms in chronic pancreatitis. At the same time as patients might participate in clinical trials though, I always emphasize that the most important thing is still their individualized treatment. And so, regardless of their participation or willingness to participate in clinical trials, I always try and emphasize that the, uh, the treatment of their symptoms and their, the clinical attention that they get is what comes first. I would just reinforce that it was very well said. You know, it, this is kind of a golden age in pancreatitis research, and it's largely been driven by the fact that the National Institutes of Health has put a lot more money into this area than they had in the past. And so there are large groups of universities that are working together to study many aspects of, of pancreatitis and there are new therapeutic strategies coming online. So there's really a lot happening in the field right now. And it really, I think is a really exciting time. And as clinicians, I mean, we're just so hopeful that that this pans out into being better treatment, more effective treatment for our patients. Because we realize that what we have to offer is, is not perfect. Anyway, so if you, um, if you go on the National Pancreas Foundation website, if you investigate the, the centers of excellence, uh, there's a lot of information there about uh, clinical studies that are currently happening that you might wanna learn about and potentially might even want to participate in. I think I would just also add uh, thank you to both Dr. Gallard and Dr. Forsmark for, for their, their inputs, um, that patients can also seek out individual clinical trials on the clinicaltrials.gov website, where mm -hmm. they can search for trials that they may be eligible for in chronic pancreatitis, looking at specific aspects uh, that and, and specific symptoms that they may be suffering from. And so that's another uh, area where uh, they can seek out um, even trials that may not be available in their immediate area, but trials that may be available nationally uh, that they could be eligible for. Mm 